Hi guys and welcome to another instalment of the Den of the Basilisk. I'm Finn from Basilisk Wargaming and we're going to pick up where we left off in the last episode on my Sanguinary Priest's Cloak. So last, uh, in the last video we basically painted his entire armour and all of his, uh, all of his accessories uh, minus his cloak and this small little uh, vial that we have here um and his head so in this video we're basically going to come in and do paint his cloak um i was i'm in an iron as to what to go with with his cloak but i think i'm just going to go for a red cloak and basically try and make it as clean and polished as possible we're then going to come in and uh, also paint in his head and this small vial that he's got on his waist on his belt so Let's get straight into it because I don't want to waste too much time talking. Uh, cue music and let's begin this paint. So we're going to start with Monument Hobbies. Uh, Burnt red as a base coat for everything. Put some of that onto our palette. So the entirety of this, if you haven't watched the first video, do go back and watch it. Uh, the entirety of this video is basically, well, this model is basically painted in uh, Monument Hobbies paints range for the most part. Um, and again, uh, as I mentioned on the first video, this isn't a uh, sponsored video or a shout out to Monument Hobbies. It's just what I've basically moved to as a paint range. So if you are already trying them, they are a very, very cool range. And I'm sure you'd probably agree. If you're not and you want to give them a try, do feel free. Um, I still use Citadel for a small amount of small amount of the paint job. Um, but that's because I don't quite have the amount of monument yet to cover my full need in the paint range. Um, so we're just basically laying a, a thin coat, watered down, uh, burnt red all over this cloak. Being careful not to get it onto anything that we've painted already. working quite quickly with this so it's no real technical area to it all I'm holding this and I don't know why I'm holding this when I should be using my paint pot holder there you go my model holder sorry So again, like I said, there's no there's no technical side to this. It's just basically trying to make sure that you work quite quickly, quickly with it, but still maintain a decent coverage over the whole model. And usually I would uh, normally have painted this cloak before going and doing all of the details around it, but um, that's not the way these videos were split out, so I was working counterintuitively to how I normally would. It just means you need to be slightly more careful around stuff that you've already done, because I don't want to have to go back and repaint this guy if I can get away with it.
We're good and just working our way around this chalice. I was looking at doing things like a almost like a rib wing um, effect on this guy, um, but on this guy's clay, cape uh, to almost make it look like blood and sinew. But I couldn't quite get it to, in the test trials that I've done. Um, just painting it onto onto plastic card, um, but almost drawing the framework of the cape onto the plastic card with all the ribbing and the waves in it and stuff I couldn't quite get it to work so I came away from that and basically decided on um, something more simple um, until I can kind of get my head around mastery in that technique again I've only really kind of seen it in uh, a mute in a YouTube video and then tried to replicate it twice so it's not something that I'm practiced in at all and I will uh, stick at it until I am but I didn't feel like you guys would be getting much value um, in a video of painting this guy with that effect for it to come out horribly so we've come away from that for now and I will apply it to a different project um, I will, my plan is to build it into my Night Lords um, color scheme on one of my characters. So I can, so you guys don't miss out and you do actually get to see that technique. Um, but by that point, by the time I go to doing my uh, first, painting my first core kill team, I will be a lot more versed in, in that technique. So for now, let's get this guy blocked in with this burnt red. Trying to get inside all of these little recesses around his holster for his pistol, etc. All these chains that he's got. So again, if you haven't watched the first video, do go back and watch it. But I do talk about this guy originally being a random model that I bought uh, years ago. Um, when I had no intention of doing Blood Angels and I can't actually remember what I bought him for I think it may have been to incorporate him into my Empress Children Army um, as a model um, and it just never came to pass so as I said that was many moons ago I no longer have Empress Children they've moved on to a better life in a better home um, But uh, yeah, I think that's what originally I bought this guy for, uh, to make some kind of uh, Fabius Bar-OS character for my Empress children. But uh, all these years on, I've obviously moved on to doing a, uh, the current Carmine Blades Blood Angel successor chapter. So um, they're getting... He's getting a second moment in the sun, as it were. So for more uh, videos on some of the work I've been doing on my Carmine Blades, I've been working on a very different color scheme than I've ever had to do before, um, using some different methods uh, than I've previously used. Do go over and check out our Twitch channel, Bastis Wargaming, over on Twitch, uh, and you will see more of the work that I've been doing on there, as long as well as uh, loads and loads of videos of me and Luke doing various other models.
if you are new to our YouTube and you haven't already uh, seen our other social media, do go check us out on Facebook and Instagram, as well as uh, Twitch, like I said. We have got a Discord server that uh, our, follow our Twitch followers and some of the guys from YouTube have now joined. Um, because we are fairly new to YouTube, to be honest, guys. We started on Twitch. I know a lot of people start the other way around, but we started on Twitch um, and we've migrated over to also use YouTube this year. So, let's get in the inside of these folds. Right, so that's the initial coat of this burnt red laid on. I'm now going to basically take the uh, same burnt red and just do a second, a second pass all over on this model, just to ensure we've got a nice clean coat. There's none of that silver showing through. And again, this is a thinner layer than we had previously used. So I'm hoping that this video, uh, the plan is for this video to last around uh, an hour, maybe an hour and a half to get this laid in. I think the previous video may have been around two hours. Maybe, I'm not sure, maybe two and a half hours. So kind of laying a time frame for how you can complete one of these models to a decent standard uh, in just a couple of hours. He is the second of my three sanguinary priests. Um, one of them is, uh, they're all quite heavily converted for my carmine blades. Um, one of them is based loosely on the original model of Corbulo. Just to add a bit of a, a bit of history to, to the army. He obviously won't be Corbulo because he's not, we're not running exactly blood angels. We are running blood angel successors. Um, but I did like the model. I had it for a little while again. Um, I think I just bought it randomly because I liked Corbulo as a character. Cool. So that's our second pass. The coverage is already a lot better than it was on the first wing round. What I'm going to do is take some more burnt orange onto our palette because we're running low on that. Oh. Burnt orange, burnt red, sorry. Um, and now, just looking in closely so I can actually see what I'm going to talk about. Uh, we're going to basically do these robes where they over they reach over onto his uh, shoulders. So what I was saying earlier about don't get any onto the original model so we don't have to go back and paint him. It's already backfired on me. I'm not ashamed to admit it. I'm basically just taking some water on the brush, basically working the paint because it's quite thin and watered down back out of this armor so we don't ruin his chest plate with this red. So again, now taking some burnt red and basically just working it onto his shoulders where his robes reach up and over sling his shoulders. Mm. 
making sure we get right into these little gaps still try to be quite careful with it Hopefully the end effect is what we, what is desired, but can't guarantee that at this stage. But I'm hoping for you guys, your guys' sake as well as my own, that it uh, goes the way I hope it does. That's part of part of the uh, the painting experience, isn't it? That you make errors and then you learn from them. I always find that some of the best the best learning curves I've had from painting have been where I fucked up so so that's one side work from the back this time working in some of that paint from above now just to get the, the best angle that I possibly can to get underneath that knife it's pinned to his belt So still working as quickly as you can, but not obviously not trying to rush it. Just coming in and just adding a second coat to this first side that we did, just to get a decent coverage like we did on the on the bottom half of the rope section. Cool. 
So that's the burnt red laid in. We're then going to take our first Citadel paint. So I'm using quite a wide range of paints on this robe. I could have gone straight to another monument one, but taking Wazdaka red from Citadel. We're just adding that to a little bit of this burnt red. I'm basically just going to lay that in, leaving a small area of the robes still in this. straight uh, burnt red mainly the shadowed areas but the majority of it we are picking out with this Wazdaka red so we're using we're leaving the burnt red as our shadow like our extreme shadow basically so I'm using it leaving it round um, like the belt area it's in a small area I'm also leaving it in the deepest recesses of this cape Some of the higher recesses, I'm just painting uh, this blend straight into it because we're obviously going to lay more and more layers of different different reds in. Moving forward. So come right out to that belt area. Just leaving a small, almost like a lip in our burnt red. So again, working quite quickly with this. Just gonna grab some more white stack on.
Just continuing to lay in this new layer. Right up to the belt line. Just leaving that little lip. So again, this is kind of a learning with you sort of video because I've ne I don't really do, uh, I haven't really done too many red cloaks in the past or, um, and this is kind of a different technique than I would normally use for doing cloaks. Um, try to do something that doesn't, starts from starts and ends with the brush so there's no there's no uh airbrush used and like i said it's a bit counterintuitive for me to work from a uh paint work this cape effect onto um an already painted model so Let me see how we get on. Just hitting these areas over the shoulders in the same way. It's not a lot of, there's not too many deep recesses on these, so the majority of them will be this blend of burnt red and uh, Wesdaka. So now what we're going to do, rather than going straight to Wazdakar and just using pure Wazdakar, uh, we're actually taking some of that, put that back onto our palette again. And then we're going to go with uh, a mix of Evil Sun Scarlet, also from Citadel. Are we? Yes. No, we're not. Because that's... I'm just comparing the two paints and that is definitely the brighter of the two. So we're going to go with bold pyro red from Monument. And basically mix the two of them together. So we can have a blend of Wazdak around uh, this bold period of red. And again, we're going to be working from the highest ridges, this time leaving some areas. Showing the, uh, the mix that we've just used when also using, leaving the, the burnt orange on its own into the recesses. So we just gradually with each one. It's not really rocket science, guys. It's not it's something that a lot of people do. Um, but we're going to be working with less and less coverage area with each layer.
So with this coat, you might find that you have to do a couple of coats. We'll just come back over it a few times just to make sure you're getting the coverage you want. trying to catch these raised areas making sure they're all done painted in how we want them to be still trying to work with the paint quite thinned should help to blend the paint to be honest so the transitions aren't quite as bold Taking a bit of water and just running it into that recess and just working out a little bit of paint that I've just brushed over the lip. Don't want to lose our dark recesses. So, like I said, I was going to go with something a bit different before, but um, we will see how that looks. That technique uh, comes to fruition in a different video on a on a Night Lord model rather than on a Blood Angel. Um, I think it will actually be more complementary to a Night Lord, to be honest. Um, that kind of like blood and sinew effect, rather than like the winged angelic nature of the Blood Angels more likely to get that ribbed um, sinewy bat wing effect on a, on a night lord with their symbol being obviously the the bat winged helm or the bat winged skull sorry than you would on a angel, angelic and noble blood angel It kind of jumped out to me because I um, thought of the armor that like Astaroth and Mephiston, and it's also in some of the uh, like the 
Blood Angels Chaplin and stuff like that have that kind of ribbed muscle effect on their armor. Um, and that's kind of what drew me drew me towards wanting to be able to paint that as like a freehand design. Um, but I've kind of drifted away from it for the Blood Angels and will probably repeat that on my Night Lords, as I said, because I've got a kill team of a kill team based on First Claw from the Aaron Dempsey Bowden books um, that I've already built a while back. Um, one of them was also made by a, one of them was also made by a really really cool YouTuber, uh, Instagrammer called uh, Thunderwolfen. I basically reached out to him and asked him if he'd uh, be kind enough to make me a model based on one of the characters. Um, basically just gave him a brief of what I, what I wanted, a really loose brief, and he kind of just brought it to life and it was amazing. So looking forward to putting some uh, paint on those models and doing them some justice in his name. Kind of been avoiding them, to be honest. Um, I'm not going to lie. I think it's just because it's a... I've almost applied my own pressure um, due to the uh, amazing job that obviously he put into that model. Um, I tried to put an equal amount of effort into building the rest of the kill team and they've come to life kind of in front of my eyes and I'm really happy with the results. Um, but yeah, painting them, I want to be able to do them justice. So I've kind of held back on doing them and, and did other projects in, in the meantime. Um, but I will be going back to them shortly and, and, and starting. Uh, I think I'm going to start with Syrian, who's uh, my least favourite character from the kill team. But um, I won't say why, because it will kind of give away quite a bit about the books. But if you haven't listened to any of the Night Lords uh, trilogy, um, Soul Hunter, uh, Blood Reaver, and Void Stalker by Aaron Dempsey Bowden. They are amazing books, especially if you're a Night Lord fan, uh, but not necessarily just because you're a Night Lord fan. Cool. So that's kind of where we've got to at the moment with this mix. I'm then going to move to. Uh, am I going to go to. Yes, I'm going to go to plain, pure, um, bold pyro red. just repeating the same process obviously applying less coverage this time so this has almost become like a highlight now with this layer can't really stress the importance of uh, how thin your paint is at this point because uh, without it you really are going to have issues when getting to this stage
it's just going to look quite blocky and it's not going to blend very well so do make sure guys that you if you're following this you do uh, just apply some water to your paint and fill it down no there's um I've been in the hobby quite a long time and I know when I originally used to paint there were like well not originally used to paint but during the process of like water and filling paints down and stuff coming in there was like a lot of stigma around it and it kind of makes you like oh so it makes you think oh it's a bit more technical than I thought it would be but it really isn't and there's no it's only as technical as you make it in your mind Quite easy to overcomplicate things and then kind of put them on a shelf that says out of my grasp sort of thing but focusing on this kneecap as it is obviously a raised area on this model it's pronounced um, next to some of the other areas on this cloak his knees are obviously bent the same with this lip of the cloak as well So I know that a lot of people like to switch between brushes and stuff like that. Again, if you're like, if that's how you're comfortable and stuff like that, there's, I wouldn't discourage it. I just, I don't know if it's, I wouldn't even call it laziness. It's just how I kind of operate is just working with brushes that aren't really fit for the, uh, the tasks that I'm applying them to. And I'm trying to move away from it. I am trying to be better with, using more sensible brushes but I always get a lot of grief from Luke and obviously people on the channel as well about how ridiculous the brushes that I'm using to paint models are I very rarely switch down to like little tiny brushes just because this is what I'm used to I guess and I kind of force myself to be able to um, paint detail with brushes that necessarily shouldn't be used for it. I'm not saying I use like big thick base brushes to paint detail, but um, yeah, the brush that I'm currently using, for example, isn't that technical is just a starter brush from it's just the starter brush that comes in the set from uh, army painter so it's got quite a bit of utility but it's not the best it's not something that I would be throwing at people and suggesting they go out and buy one it's just a, a tool that I'm using to transition myself onto using better brushes I have got the guys on the stream and anyone watching this would be uh, glad to know that I have gone and bought uh, I bought them a while ago actually I feel like that's becoming a theme that I say that but I, I did buy them a while back um, I bought a decent set of brushes I just haven't um, moved to them yet because I like to get the, val the full value out of whatever I'm using so I won't move to those until these are the ones that I'm currently using have expired. They can't be used anymore. So 
we're just taking uh, Evil Sun Scarlet, which will be our brightest color. Um, and we're basically just going to do a brightest highlight just in certain areas, just catching the highest points with this model. Again, just making sure it's been down nicely. So not trying to lose what we've done previously, and that's what's I think most important to make sure that you still have those previous layers there so you can see quite clearly um, that it transitions from one colour to another and you don't just end up with a really bright colour and then a really dark recess. from the tops of these folds in the robes. Again, I've just made another mistake where I've been caught off guard. It's fine, we can fix that momentarily. Just laying it in on these robes where they run over his shoulders. I'm aware that some of it will be covered by pauldrons but um, and shoulder pads but we don't want to leave anything to chance I always like to I always end up painting details that you can't necessarily see um, it's because you never know and also because I know they're there um, so it would irritate me if I knew they weren't done So that is basically the cloak and where we're going to leave it. Um, what I will do now is come to this vial and we're just going to go back to a bit of Wazdaka Red. We're just going to paint that quite liberally onto this vial. Get a little bit more West Acre. so working with quite thin layers anyway, so it's gonna dry quite quickly. It's 
which means we can just come over it and put in that second coat So now we've added in that WES what we're going to do is just take a bit of water on our brush and then come back to some of the uh, bold pyro red that we had on our planet. And we're going to just work that in, leaving some of the leaving some of the uh, WES Dacker showing. dragging I've just taken the paint off my brush and basically just used a bit of water and I'm almost dragging a small bit of that pyro red just over the wasdaka and I'm just coming in now just around the tops with some of that Evil Sun Scarlet do finally is just come back to the burnt red that we used originally on the cape just add a tiny bit of that into our palette and we need a tiny bit and then just come straight back into the very bottom of this vial almost work in reverse just add a shadowed area to the bottom Right, so from there, I'm basically going to come straight back to my palette. I'm going to add some white if it hasn't completely dried up. There you go. For this part, I will actually change brush and not be ridiculous. So, change to a thinner brush now. Just taking a small bit of white and basically just gonna get some more water. Just almost drawing a slight white highlight line at the top of this vial. Then I'm going to come straight back to our red, our brightest red, and just use that to follow the line and thin it as much as we can. Then I'm going to come straight back to my white again. I'm just going to add a tiny bit of water. Just 
going to take a tiny bit of water and our white and basically just lay in some bubbles Just coarsen up from the bottom. Just going to use some red to remove one of those bubbles that went wrong. Take a bit more white, just add one or two of these bubbles to the front of that bottle as well. Maybe one or two just to the back of the wall. Just to give the effect that it is, give the impression that it is liquid and it's not just an extension of the cake. Finally, just going to take a little bit of black. And just go along the top of the white line from the other from the other side. Cool. So that's our vial. And finally, what I'm going to do is just take a bit more white, and I'm just going to come back and fix some of the errors. As I said, we tried to make sure we didn't make any and we minimised the amount that we made on the armour. But inevitably, you're going to get some mistakes. So I'm just coming and fixing uh, the small areas where I've accidentally blemished the armour of the red. Not too many, to be honest, which is good. But there are a few. One of them isn't actually a red area, it's a grey area, so we need a bit of our bright neutral grey. Also from Monument Hobbies, and we need to just take that out of existence. Fixing that. Cool. So, looking around, I think... He is good to go. Just looking at him closely, guys, just to make sure everything's been caught. So, yeah, I think he's relatively good to go now. Let me see if I can get him to zoom in. There you go. So, we've got our Sanguinary Priest in his new robes, his vial on his side. Quite happy with the way he's come out, to be honest. So without further ado, I'm going to put him down and I'm going to come over to his head. So his head should be uh, a lot more simple. <laughs> the hope is. Um, so what we're going to do is quite a simple palette that we're going to use. We're going to use a bit of white. We're going to use two flesh tones. Um, 
and then we've got um, some yellow as well. So let's start it off with our first flesh tone, which is Shadow Flesh. I've definitely put more of that on my palette than I'll ever need for this one model. But there you go. Fun times. So Shadow Flesh. I just basically on this guy, I've already painted on his uh, metallics around his neck because I did that beforehand. I think I did that originally when I laid in all the metallics on the actual body. Um, and then I decided that he would be part of this second video. So I'm just going to basically take this flesh tone, shadow flesh, and just paint it all over his face. There's nothing technical about it, guys. It's literally how it sounds. We're going to just layer it in all over his face. We may actually use one or two other paints that I haven't already mentioned on this guy, just depending on how I feel at the time, but we will see. Um, I don't think we will actually need to, to be honest. I think a simple palette sometimes works the best with things like this. Cool, so that's his... Uh, that's his face laid in. While that's drying, I will just take a bit of black. Just thin that right down with some water. And then basically, I'm just going to work that in over all of the metallics that are on him. And just wash that all over. So we used um, a dark silver. I can't. I think it's just. I think it's dark metallic silver or something from Monument Hobbies. I have got it here actually. Uh, dark silver to originally lay in the um, metallics that he's got around his chin and under his neck. We're then going to take a small amount of Iron Breaker, which was originally, like I said in the last video, a Citadel, uh, which is originally a Citadel airbrush paint. Just going to take that onto our thinner brush now. And we're basically just going to catch some of these raised areas and almost provide like a highlight on the metallics on the head just going around and catching the edges add a little bit of depth to these comms pieces etc that are on him And finally, we're going to take Skull Crusher Brass, which is fast becoming one of my favourite metallics from Citadel. And we're just going to add a little bit of that to this guy's head metallics, just to break up some of the silver. I'm just going to lay it over this hair on his chin, uh, the little buttons that stick up, and also on this little connection that runs onto his hair, and the two little nodes on the back of the head, just to break up some of the silver. Don't want it to be too much of one colour. Right, 
we're now going to take pale town flesh if it's even open there's a question I don't think I've even used it so far no I haven't right so pale town flesh And now I'm going to use a thinner brush for this. I'm just going to use the other brush, but I've decided against it. And we're basically just going to... Hmm, we're actually going to mix a bit of Pale Town Flesh in with our previous flesh tone. I'm just going to pick out some of these areas on him. Basically, highlight up the skin so it's not just one flat color. Again, there's no real, um, it's not too technical. I'm just basically just hitting the higher, some of the higher reaches of his face. I'm just trying to leave some pitted shadow in there with the original flesh tone. Sometimes you find that just going over it one or two times will already add multiple layers of depth, even if it's just with the same, you're just repeating the same um, process with, with the same highlight. Maybe thinner and thinner every time you get the different layers of depth in there. Now I'm just basically coming straight in with uh, pure pale uh, tan flesh, not pale flesh. I have got pale flesh, but um, it's not what I need for this model. And I'm basically doing it. Again, the same thing as we did kind of on the cloak, which is just hitting certain areas, making them stand out, not everywhere. Again, the amount of water you use, or thinner that you use, um, is important. I'm 
the difference between your highlights blending and your highlights looking quite blocky. So he's at a stage now where I'm, I wouldn't say, looking at him now, I wouldn't say that I was happy with him because um, he doesn't look exactly how I'd want him to look. But I am happy with him in the knowledge that I know that the next stage should rectify that. Um, so we're on course is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> but... Um, yeah, so what I'm going to do is come straight back to our darkest tone, which was um, the shadow flesh, just on our thin brush again. And I'm basically just going to paint that onto this scarred area that he has that runs down his head. <laughs> Now we have a colour here called uh, but a light umber. So we're going to take that light umber, a little bit of that on the palette, and also a very small amount of black. And I mean a very small amount. And we're basically going to just mix them together. Form a darker tone. I'm basically just going to take some water and create a very thin, almost like a wash. I'm just going to apply that to this guy's face. So again, that's why I said, guys, that I'm not too um, worried about the way that his face looked at that point because we were going to apply that wash and then we'll see uh, once that's dried in the recesses, that should give us some... Um, uh, some, dark, some darkness beyond... Um, what we had with the with the shadow flesh. So now I've got a mix here now of uh, moon yellow from uh, from game color and also the pale flesh that we used on the skin. Now I'm just applying that to his hair whilst his skin dries. So it'll create like a quite a pastely yellow. In the mix that I've used. I'm just going to pick out these areas of his hair where it's been uh, scarred. So he's got like a claw mark or like a knife mark down the side of his head, like a gouge um, down one side of his head that actually goes all the way to the hairline. Um, and because of that, I've basically made sure that we've captured the fact that the hairline's actually not fully intact. So I'm just bringing it around to this crested area of his hair um, and making sure that we go right to the hairline on this side as well and bring that right back to his comms unit so that's laid in so we've got quite a pastely pastely yellow hair car at the moment and then what we're going to do is actually move Add in a little more Uriel Yellow and then actually add in 
a little bit of white as well. We're just going to come back over his hair. So it's almost like I'm not painting it directly on because we're going to leave some of that pastel colour from previous showing through. It's actually more like I'm stippling it, um, as weird as that sounds. And now it looks like our original, uh, our wash has dried on the skin. So we're just going to come back to our brightest tone, which is the tan flesh. Again, with a little bit of water. And we're just going to use our thin brush. And we're just going to apply a highlight. The raises the raised areas of his face. Just drawing some paint out there. I actually went down into one of the crevices that I didn't want it to be in. And finally, I'm going to take a little bit of that mix that we made earlier for the wash, that dark colour, basically just feed that into the mouth slit. And also into the eye sockets. And that's all right to make errors here. When you do, you just go back and forth between. The highlight and the shade until you've got it to an area where you're happy with it. And then lastly, I'm just going to take some white, just pure white. Just add the eyes in. So I know a lot of there's people out there that go to like dotting pupils and all kinds of madness like that. I don't go quite that far. I add the white into the eyes and that's it. Um, I haven't quite got to a point where I'm comfortable with dotting eyes. I've tried it. It's not for me at the moment.
just going back to that tan or pale or tan flesh just go on. and making sure we've got those eyelids painted in I'm just taking a final bit of that dark wash and just reinserting that back into the uh, reinserting that back into the eye socket and then also running it alongside either end of this scar that he's got on his head and that's it guys so I don't know if you can see quite as well how his head's come out. Um, obviously those recesses in the eyes will dry and then uh, look a lot more shadowed. Um, but yeah, that's basically how our video has gone so far. So thank you all for joining me. Um, really enjoyed making this video series. And if you're not already a, a follower or a subscriber over on our Twitch channel, do go over and join us on there. Um, also in our Discord and on our Instagram. Um, do check us out because we uh, do put a lot of content on there. And in fact, the next post that I put on Instagram probably later on today will be the completed build of this guy. So with all of his parts put together. So thank you again. Uh, stay safe, take care, and I'll speak to you on the next video, guys.